The cat, yes. And I'm damned if he doesn't see us, too. That's our man. Home! Hold, I say! Drive! Ah! What's his game to foot? Well, I had to sit on the ground and tell sad stories of the former greatness of detectives. Spilt nail pill boy. The number? Cab 2704. We'll wire the official registry for the driver's name from the hotel. <sighs> now, catching our breath just now puts me in mind of Sir Charles's death. Pleasant correlation. Well, that night in the U Alley, I expect he was running away from something. Or someone, yes. A rather large, glowing dog, perhaps? Now, there's no need to look at me as if my head has just come to a point. By the rules of your own methods, we have not yet proved it doesn't exist, have we? Dr. Waterman, and apparently now others in the medical profession, would have it that Sir Charles took his customary walk that night, and upon stopping at the gate for a few moments, looked out over the moor and came face to face with the spectral hound of his inebriated ancestors. Then, crazed with fear, ran the wrong way down the yew alley until he burst his heart and fell dead upon his face. Seems reasonable to me. But it fits the facts at face value. A winged fairy retrieving the poor teeth of children from under their pillows at night fits the facts at face value. Yes, but fairies seldom leave footprints in the muck. The better question is, who was he waiting for that night? Was he waiting for someone? Well, I thought he went out every evening. I think it unlikely he waited at the gate every evening. Besides, the man was elderly, the night and clement and damp. The evidence is that he was growing to despise them all. That night he waited there. Perhaps he had a scheduled meeting with the hat. You know, game of cards, share a pint, mull over old times. <laughs> Dear me, fairly made my night just then.